Hi everyone, in our last class we concluded on systematic risk. In this class we're going to systematic risk and I started explaining it. I said the systematic risk is the risk in the market, is the risk that cannot be diversified. Okay, so to calculate your systematic risk, you have two approaches, which is the covariance approach and the coefficient of correlation approach. So remember that we are done with unsystematic risk, which is represented by standard deviation, and I gave you the formulas for calculating um unsystematic risk in your one asset portfolio and i also gave you for your two asset portfolio remember so this um systematic risk like i said is calculated using this formula and you always calculate this from the approach of covariance and your correlation coefficient okay so from the point of view of covariance depends on the information you are given if you are given um, covariance you use the covariance formula if you are given um correlation coefficient use the correlation coefficient formula so your risk okay is equal to covariance between that security and the market divided by the risk in the market squared that's the variance then using the correlation coefficient formula your systematic risk risk of the security over the risk of the market multiplied by your correlation coefficient between the security and the market so when you're calculating this is for a one asset portfolio when you have many portfolios you know your own systematic risk is going to be the risk of the first asset in the portfolio multiplied by the weight of the first asset plus the risk of the second asset in the portfolio multiplied by the weight of if there's a third asset you put it the weight of the third asset like that like that so whatever number you have you know this formula it looks very funny um, apart from systematic risk another thing we're going to conclude in this class is um portfolio stock valuation that's alpha values but before that let me see if we can solve a question on systematic risk All right okay so you have a question on the screen it says security a b and c have the following characteristics as you can see security a has expected return of 10 percent security b has an expected return of 14 and c has an expected return of 20 percent the betas as you can see the betas they are there that is the systematic risk, the market risk, okay, for the respective securities, right? Now, the thing that the market return is 12% and the risk free rate is 5%. When you see a line like this, you remember your CAPIM, capital asset pricing model. Anybody that is in this portfolio class already knows CAPIM, right? Although we'll touch part of it in portfolio theory. Then required, what is the expected return on the portfolio with equal weight? So they're asking for expected return on the portfolio with equal weight. What is the better of a portfolio with equal weight? Um, state whether each security is correctly priced. And D, what to be your strategy for each security? Okay, see, before we solve this question, you know what we're going to do? Let's quickly do um, stock valuation in portfolio. That's to know whether a portfolio is correctly priced or not because it's already in that question. Right, that's why most portfolio questions they come all together. So let's do stock valuation, which is measured by alpha. Some of us already know this, now we've come across it before. Um, so a particular stock in the market, say stock A, there will be a particular amount of return that the investor is expecting on that stock. That is called the stock return, expected return, like what we've been calculating, right? But then the market is also saying something about the stock. The market is also saying something about the stock. That one we can call it the market return. So to get your alpha value, you're comparing the stock return and the market return. So alpha is the difference between the stock return and the market return. The stock return is how much did the stock actually produce? Were they able to return up to 10% when the market was predicting, based on the forces of the market, that it would return 15%? If the market was predicting that it's return 15% and they are returning 10%, it means the market has overvalued the stock, okay? So stock valuation has to do with valuing of the stock, of the security, to know whether it is overvalued or whether it is undervalued. So the alpha value is the difference between the stock return and the market return. So let's set the rules. When your stock return is greater than your market return, it means the stock is undervalued and your decision will be to what? Buy. If the stock return is less than the market return, it means that stock is what? Overvalued. Overvalued by overvalued by the market. It is the market that always values this stock. Because before you even go to invest, 
the market is already saying something about the stock you know what happens in the market okay these things are just theoretical stuff so if the stock return is equal to the market return it means it is correctly valued or it's accurately valued by the market so at that point you hold right so at that point you hold you won't do anything you just hold the stock so if your stock return is greater than your market return say your stock return the actual return that is that security could give you 10% say you bought stock in a particular company and then you got returns of 10% but the market has predicted that maybe it is just 8% that can be gotten it means the market undervalued this stock there's something we call the all share index okay so the market always have their predictions about a particular stock so if the market is saying 8% it means that the stock return the actual return is greater than the fair value than what the market is saying so the market has undervalued so if they undervalue a particular stock as an investor you go and buy more of it because it means the market is still putting it out at this value right that you get this return meanwhile you're getting this high so it means it is undervalued by the market so if in, in case you're in the exam and then you can't remember this rule of something greater than this you understand the concepts behind this so you go and buy more of the stock that's the decision that's what they asked in this question what would be your strategy for each of the security the question i read earlier security a b and c the strategy will be to buy so you will put it like that now look at the stock return let's say you made 10 percent actual return right and then the market return, the market return was, say, 15%. You can see that the stock return is less. So it means the market has overvalued the stock. So you need to know who undervalues, who overvalues. It's the market that does the valuation. Okay? So the market has overvalued the stock. And when it is overvalued, you go and sell it off. And what's the rationale behind that? There's no point of you holding on to a stock that the market is saying should be paying you 15% and it is paying you 10%. Can you see that? But if a stock that the market is saying it should be paying you 8%, it's paying you 10%, you will go and buy more of it. Now, if your stock return was actually 10% and the market said it to be 10%, it is correctly valued, so you just hold. Do you understand? Now, where the twist is, how would you now get this market return? In question, most times, like what they gave us here, they told you A, B, and C is 10%. They will give you the stock return. They will tell you that ah, for the year, oh, this investor made this on stock A, stock B, so it's given. Now, this market return, they won't give you. That is what is the market saying. Now, to calculate the market return is where you will need this market risk, this systematic risk that we've been doing. That's why it is all encompassed in that question. So, to get that market return, hmm, that your market return that you're going to use to compare to your stock return is where you need the capping formula. Remember cost of equity. That when we did um, cost of equity is on this channel, um, that your market return is equal to your risk free rate plus beta, okay, which is the systematic risk in this case, into your market return minus your risk free this is the market premium so remember that it's cost of equity that is usually here when we did um capping okay which makes sense because cost of equity comes in percentage it's also a minimum required rate of return so what i'm saying this is how to calculate your market return most times you need to estimate it they won't give you the market return but they gave you the variables you need to estimate your market return okay which is the average market return and the risk free rate so because they gave you a market return here as 12 percent does not mean that that is the market return on security a security b and security c Remember that security A, security B, and security C have their unique betas. That is what you use to determine. That 12% they gave you as market return is a general market return. Does it make sense? You're still going to use the individual betas, the 0 0.75, the 1.0, and the 1.2 to calculate the peculiar market return that should be expected on each stock. So I think we already understand this um, stock valuation. We understand the alpha values and all of that. Let's now solve this question. Then maybe in the last class, we'll now um, do capital market line and security market line and maybe solve one more one item question so let's do the solution to this I don't like this guy. um so the first part of the question said what is the expected return on a portfolio with equal weight a what is the expected return on a portfolio with equal weight when they say a portfolio has equal weight in this case you have asset a asset b and asset c in the portfolio so if it has equal weight how can we do everything that it will be equal to 100 percent okay so that's 100 percent divided by three 100 percent divided by three that's the 3.3 uh -huh. so don't give yourself that stress that's the 3.333 means one over three one over three one over three okay because if you add all this together you get one one means 100 percent does it make sense so you ask yourself, what is the formula to calculate expected return? The formula to calculate your expected return in this case is what? The risk-free rate plus beta into your 
market return minus your risk free rate okay remember that when you see expected return of a two asset portfolio because this is not one asset portfolio you have many assets so it's called a two asset portfolio that you say return of a multiplied by weight of a return of b multiplied by weight of b return of c multiplied by weight of c right remember this approach so here you're not going to use it the reason you're not going to use it is because of the beta factors. So whenever you see the beta factor, or whenever you see systematic risk in a portfolio question, and you're asked to calculate your expected return, just use the formula that has that particular risk. Okay, use the formula that has that risk. And as we are solving now, you get what I'm saying. So let's put our variables. If we are looking for expected return, we know our risk-free rate as 5%. Now, what is the beta factor of the portfolio? Not the beta factor of each security of the portfolio you don't know it but we know this one as 12 percent the average market return and we know this as five percent so let us go and solve for this average beta coefficient okay so the beta coefficient of the portfolio is going to be equal to the beta coefficient of a times the weight of a the beta coefficient of b times the weight of b the beta coefficient of c times the weight of c um remember that i wrote it here i wrote that somewhere here see it here okay. so we're going to solve that. It's very simple. So what's the beta of A? That's the systematic risk. 0 0.75 times 1 over 3. That's the weight. Plus 1.00 times 1 over 3. Equal weight. Plus 1.2 times 1 over 3. Put that in your calculator. 0 0.75 divided by 3. You have 0 0.25. Plus 1 divided by 3. That's 0 0.33. Plus 1.2 divided by 3 that's 0 0.4 add it all together that gives 0 0.98 so now that you have calculated your portfolio beta you now use your portfolio beta to calculate your expected return does it make sense so we have our expected return to be equal to 5% plus 0 0.98 into 12% minus 5% this is 7% times 0.98 that's 6.68 plus 5% that's 11.8 86%, percent 11.86% as your expected return. The B part of the question says, what is the beta of a portfolio? See, they're asking, what is the beta of the portfolio with equal weights? We've already calculated that. It was even a requirement for the working, right? So if you see, I even marked that particular question as A instead of B. So that is um, 0 0.98, which you've already calculated. Then the C part of the question now says, state whether each security is correctly priced. So that is security A, security B, and security C. We want to know if how do we know if it is correctly priced? Remember, underpricing or undervaluing, and overpricing or overvaluing of stock. So when you want to know if something is correctly priced, you are trying to calculate the what alpha. Okay, and to calculate the alpha, you want to know what is the stock return and what is the market return. Then you know the alpha. When you know the alpha, you know the pricing. Mm, or valuing whether it's correctly priced then they said what would be your strategy that's the deep part that you can know your strategy okay so what is the stock return on a very easy they told you that the return was 10 percent or the expected return is 10 percent they told you it is 14 percent for b and 20 percent for c the market return for a they didn't give it to you that's what you go and calculate using capim approach that formula we used up there so for A, it's going to be what? Your risk-free rate, which is 5% plus, what is the beta peculiar to A? 0 0.75 into market return, 12% minus risk-free rate, 5%. That's your market return for security A. For B, you also have 5% plus, it is only this beta that will change because that is what is peculiar, <laughs> that will change because that is what is peculiar to it, right? Um... There are different kinds of stocks in the market and there are different ways they react to market conditions. That's just what it means. Okay. So beta, this beta here, you can see it's different for each of them. It measures the changes in the stock to the changes in the market factors. Does it make sense? You, you get it. It's just English. You understand it. I, like, I think I, I used to over-explain things because I always want people to get it. Um. So 12% minus 5%. Then when you put this in your calculator... Um, that's 10.25 percent put that here immediately 10.25 that'll give you 12 percent see this one is 12 percent can you see when you are taking a risk of one a risk of one is a risk equal to the market oh there are things i'm not even explaining a risk of one when you have one 
your beta giving you one hmm? it means that the changes in the stock was equal to the changes in the market when something can sometimes give you one so because you are, you are taking the same level of risk with the market so you are going to have the same average return as the market don't forget that this is market return average market return here that's why you're having two percent this two months if i think you would know this one already in cost of capital because we actually explained this thing in cost of capital and that will give it 13.4 percent you put that here 13.4 percent okay so you get your alpha value 10 minus this that will give you minus 0.25 if you like put minus if you like don't put minus the important thing is that you get your pricing and your decision right okay 14 minus this that will give you two percent then this minus this that will give you six is it six point four 6.6%. 6.6%. Okay. Now let's do the pricing. Don't use minus or whatever to know your pricing. Just use this. I know that if this is greater than this, is what? Undervalued. Okay. But since this is less than this, this is overvalued. Does it make sense? Let's not even go that route. Let's just say it like this. Start from the market. Market is saying that A will make 10.25. Uh A fell our hand. They made this. What did market do? The market overvalued A. So you put that overvalued. And when something is overvalued, what do you do? Sell it off. Sell it off. You cannot be telling me that I'll make this and I'm making just this. Let me sell this to put that. I know that they can go and make this. <laughs> Market said we'll make 12. Wow. We are making this. Market undervalued us. They never see me coming. <laughs> when something is undervalued, will you go and buy more? Because what are you doing that you're making 14%? Wow. Go and buy more of B. Right? Market said we'll make this. We made a whooping 20%. Undervalued. Market undervalued us. So we'll go and buy. <laughs> so that's the strategy. What the question says? Let's say what will be your strategy for? Or you can write it out, okay? You can answer C properly. State whether each security is correctly priced based on the calculation above. Security A is under. Security A is overpriced by the market because it has a return of ten percent, as opposed to the market prediction of ten point two five percent. You can see that without understanding English, so if it's hard to pass this exam, <laughs> then security B and C are undervalued. Then D, you now come down to D. What will be your strategy in each of the security? You say D, security A, the strategy will be to sell. Security B, the strategy is to buy. And security C, the strategy is to buy. Does that make sense? That is all. Okay. So I'm not going to say that this is all of the kind of questions you can see. Of course, you can see more difficult questions. Okay, but in another class, maybe we'll solve one I can question. Then I'll give you like five um, past questions from recent I can past questions that you can use to study. Based on everything that we've done in this portfolio class, you can pass portfolio comfortably. I'm serious. If you check past questions, the only thing past question does is that it shows you different angles. And it's always good to read past question because you know how they can bring out the question. In past question, they can tell you that you should calculate stock return. They might give you market return. If they calculate stock return, remember our portfolio return we calculated to assets portfolio. How did we get it? <laughs> so those are the twists they can give you. You understand? So the next topic will be on capital market line and security market line. I'm sure that this class is already very long. Capital market line and security market line. This one has been examined. I've seen it like in two, two diets. So it's very important. So we'll continue this one in the next class. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.